Welcome everyone to the uh, Blocksmith follow-up webinar. We are here with Colin from Blocksmith and I'm Michelle from PCS Adventures. And we're really excited to share with you today a little bit more information about Blocksmith and some projects that you can do with your students. Um, if you weren't able to join us for the first one, to give you a little bit of background, PCS, we've just started offering Blocksmith as one of our products. We are all about, as a company, finding ways to make STEM fun and engaging. And so we love Blocksmith because it takes computer science that we're all trying to teach, and it makes it really fun by approaching it through game making that you can also do in VR and AR. So Colin's going to tell us a lot more for today uh, from a lot of our early adopters. We've gotten to see some projects that have become really popular. And so Colin is going to share one of those today, how to make a piano in the Blocksmith software. Exactly. So we'll just go over, you know, basic things in Blocksmith, animations, simple interactions, how you can use just very simple shapes to uh, construct a really fun experience with, you know, a very, very uh, low entry bar of knowledge. Perfect. So, yeah. We'll be doing a lot of screen sharing today. So right now on your screen, you're probably seeing our faces as well as a screen share. There is a bar in the middle where you can adjust. And so we'd highly recommend making the screen share as large as possible. Mm -hmm. All right, go for it, Colin. All right, I'll switch to the Blocksmith Builder here. There we go. All right, if you were with us last time, you saw us make a rocket demo in which we used animations and interactions to put a rocket together very sim um, quickly and simply, and then use uh, animations to get that rocket to launch into the air. Today, we're gonna be doing something a little bit similar in that we will be using the same uh, interactions and animations, but I'm actually gonna create something which uh, plays music, or you can you know, try and, you could try and make music with it. There we go. So right now you've dragged, is that just a basic cube onto the screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm gonna use this cube as a basis for a piano. And I'm just modeling a piano key right now, just using some simple snapping tools. And uh, once I have that going, I'll drag in a sound object. Here we go. So a sound object, what exactly does sound mean? Right, so I can actually load any sound effect, any note, um, we actually have a whole library of sounds as well, which you can see right oh, in yes. here. Okay. I actually have some uploaded, so I'm gonna have to log in really quick, uh, to my account. And once we get that pulled up, and I can use those preloaded sounds. Can you record your own sounds and add them as well? You can load them or you could uh, record them in Windows or Mac and then yeah, just upload them to our server so you can have whatever sound you want. There we go. I just chose a pretty basic sound there, just a C note. And what I'm going to do here is just uh, use, like I said earlier, just one of those interactions that allows me to have some kind of effect uh, in the builder when I click on my note. Mm -hmm. So first thing I'm going to do is just go over to my events tab and say when that uh, key is actually clicked by the player, mm -hmm. then I want the sound object. So I just have to target my sound object to play a sound. Okay. Now this is all very, very simple stuff that I've done so far, you know, just adding a few basic shapes and then just hooking it up to uh, just another shape that I've loaded a sound on. Yeah. So let's see if that works. So what just happened there when you switched the view? Sure, so I just entered our viewer here and uh, this is gonna play a note. It might be a little loud, so I'm gonna test it out and then uh, adjust the volume. All right. So there's my note, and as I said, that was just a little loud, so I'm gonna lower our volume here. Uh, and now I'm gonna kind of create a little keyboard around it. So once again, just using those basic shapes and just clicking and dragging using our transform tools that we talked about in our, uh, in our last webinar. So here we go, just putting a few shapes together. And while, this may seem a little uh, intimidating. It's actually very simple to use because of those tools like I just used, the uh, snapping, uh, shape snapping tool like I'm doing right now, where you can just click and drag those shapes very similar to something like Legos. So students and teachers are able to, you know, do 3D modeling or just, you know, basic 3D scene creation very simply. So here we go, I have a little basic keyboard mat and I'm going to put that all together and group it. 
So I have my key. Well, you said group it. What does that mean? Right. So I just uh, was able to group this object together. So now it's just one kind of large object that my key can uh, sit in. And why did you do that? That just helps me with the uh, alignment of certain objects and I'm making sure that I don't select the wrong thing. All right, that's even got a good place. I'm actually going to undo that right now. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those further uh, tools that allows you to kind of easily create things. And, uh, um, you know, it definitely helps with the 3D modeling and 3D scene creation process. All right, so I'm going to make a new key from scratch here. And to do that, I'm just going to grab another cube. And I'll go a little bit slower this time if you're just um, joining us or if you didn't really catch uh, the first part there. So just stretch it out into a key shape, change its color. I want it to be a nice white key. And then to add on that sound object, that is in our special tab. And if you, um, our special tab has a lot of pretty great objects in here that uh, we talked about a little bit last time with uh, variables and triggers and objects that allow you to actually go a lot further with um, the computer science aspect. Yeah. But uh, today I'll just be using those sound objects. So there we go, got another sound in there. I'm going to decrease the volume on this one too. Go to my media. And these are all those preloaded sounds again? Exactly. So I just uploaded, um, every user can upload a number of uh, sound files and images to their, mm -hmm. to their account for free. Um, so I just uploaded a few piano notes there and got one selected. That's a D key. And once again, get that to play mm -hmm. is a very simple addition. It's just going to my events tab and saying, when this key is clicked by my player, mm -hmm. then I want my sound object to play a sound. So this is similar in Scratch to those if then sort of events, right? Exactly. Yeah. So we're using uh, mainly conditionals for our event system. So the yeah. if, you know, uh, if this occurs, then have this um, action take place, which, uh, you know, is a great intro to the fundamentals of programming for a lot of yeah. students and a, a great next step if they have used something like Scratch before. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So I think I'm uh, set up with two keys now. So I'm going to test these out. And to do that, I'm going to go to my play button and play my viewer. Okay. And I have one key that should play my C note and another that should play my D note. Nice. All right, so I'm going to exit. And while I have my notes, I actually want to add a little bit more fun to this scene as well. And okay. you can definitely do that using animations. So animations, if you saw our last uh, uh, webinar, allowed us to make a rocket launch off and fly into the sky. Yeah. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to do a pretty simple animation, just a rotation and movement to have this key just go down, basically, whenever it, I click it, so it looks like it's getting pressed. I'm going to make it go a little fast, have it accelerate. And for now, I want to see if it just works. So I'm going to do a little quick test here, play my scene. There we go. It's going. So this very is simple. Scene. You don't have to trigger it. It's just happening all the time in the background. Exactly. Um, so in that case, I just have that object just looping continuously. Mm -hmm. So it would just you know um, play forever on its own. However, I actually want to hook that up to my sound object and to that event. So whenever I click on it, it actually plays that animation and plays that sound. So kind of sync those two things up. And then the, the events. Exactly. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my events tab here. And I can actually use this event that I already have, because that is on my key. When you click that key, it plays a sound. Exactly. And I'm just going to add one more line that says, also have itself play its animation. Okay. And it's actually that simple to get my animation to play with a key, or play with a, a click, rather than just play by itself. I am going to change my settings here just a little bit. And I'm going to add one more event that has the animation stop. And so you're saying when you stop clicking it, then it's going to huh. stop moving? Yeah. Um, and it looks like I am missing that event uh, currently. 
So I'm going to just test it out right now and let's see if that actually plays. There we go. So, okay, so if you want to add motion, that's mm -hmm. where you do an animation. And exactly. And tie it to an event with an event. That makes sense. Right. Okay. So I actually can take uh, this, uh, these two actual objects mm -hmm. and easily just um, duplicate them or just mm -hmm. copy and paste them across my scene to have more keys. Just save time. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, and just save effort. So that is just pressing one uh, hot key on my keyboard, the R key. And when I press that R key, I have an instant duplicate, um, the events, nice. animation, everything uh, of my object here. And okay. I just have another sound object. And really the only thing that I need to do to get this to work is just change the uh, sound mm -hmm. that's on that sound object. So it copies the event as well? Exactly. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to choose my next key, and I'm going to do that uh, just a couple more times. So I have, let's see, just try with one. There we go. That's a pretty good fit. Now we have three keys. Exactly. So I just duplicated it one more time. Now I'll shrink my keyboard down a little bit. So nice, nice fit there. And now I have, uh, let me just change my sound. A little three three note keyboard, nice. uh, and let's let's test it out. So I'm just going to hit play and play viewer again to be able to watch this. There we go. Yes. So play viewer. This is if I had on my VR headset. This is what I would be seeing. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, from here, mm -hmm. how long would it take in the software to be able to build something like this? What have you seen? Sure. Uh, so we have actually seen a high school student uh, take this uh, much further, just within about a week. So they, wow. they took the idea of a, a keyboard that you could play, that you could even jump on and play the sounds, mm -hmm. uh, and be able to run around, and they created an entire arena of music making uh, instruments and you know keyboards that uh, were not just fun to you know play, but they also had game um, making effects in there that yeah. kind of launched the players, kind of yeah. like a trampoline. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty great, and I'll actually show you that in just a second. I'm going to save this project really quickly, though. So, if we wanted to, could we see your keyboard in AR? We could actually, and that's what I am doing uh, with saving this project. So I'm going to save it publicly so anybody okay. on this domain can see it. And this is actually a question we got after the last webinar. You know, we've talked a lot about virtual reality, but a lot of people asked about augmented reality. Right. So I'm excited to be able to see this today. I know we have a phone here to demonstrate. And so if you're watching, you may want to expand that video portion. But here we have someone logging into the Glocksmith app on their phone. That's viewer correct. App? Yeah. Okay. Our viewer, which is mobile, but you can also do the viewer on VR devices. Okay. Just pulling up the experience. And we're going to see if we can watch this in AR. So it's downloading the experience. You should see it's our open. mouse pad in front of us here. Yep. There's the keyboard, which he's now playing on mobile. So yeah, those the upload and download and sharing times are very minimal. Exactly. So when you're looking at that through AR, it's like there's literally a keyboard here in front of us. Right, exactly, which we'll see in just a second. Awesome. Yeah, so you can actually um, play that keyboard as it's floating in the air. Yeah, okay, so there it is there it on is. our mouse pad. Exactly. In AR. And yep, now he's playing the AR keyboard. Awesome. And I believe you said on that app you have the option, right? You can either export in AR, augmented reality, or VR virtual reality. Exactly. And it's actually just a button press. So awesome. you can, don't have to export or import anything on the app. You just um, switch between whichever modes you want. So if you've seen something in VR and it seems really cool, if you want to see what that would be like in AR, AR you just can just press one button and then it transfers to that, that yes. format. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can also, yeah, play those. Uh, just like a normal mobile game as well. So we have the three formats kind of all in one. You know, that 
definitely is a, a big catch for the students. Yeah. They can kind of instantly transfer between their preferred uh, method. Sure. Well, and I know you said before too, a lot of schools and other educational sites are doing this maybe with only one VR device. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And, you know, the thing that we've actually seen is that uh, while students love going to see their things in VR, they actually spend most of their time uh, involved in creating it, yeah, on the computer, creating yeah. the thing because uh, they want it to seem really cool, especially when they yeah. share it with their friends and, uh, you know, maybe with their family members and then get back home. No, totally. Well, and that's awesome because I'm sure, as you guys know, all the research is showing, right? You want to limit the amount of time in VR, right? It's super engaging. So you want to make that in short doses. Exactly. Yeah. Especially in the classroom where you may not have all of those uh, devices available. So you just um, want to make that really cool thing that the student has made and then they can go see for a couple minutes and then just transfer to the next student. And uh, the process works really well. That's awesome. Very uh, self manageable. Mm -hmm. So you said you had a student that started out with a simple piano and mm -hmm. ended up creating something super awesome. Exactly. And I believe you guys also showed this at Hackport, one of our big festivals here in Boise, right? Right, yeah. So uh, Hackport is tied to Treeport, uh, a local um, Boise uh, music festival, actually one of the biggest in the nation. So. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we, we actually had a, a booth there and um, this uh, student had just kind of whipped this music experience together um, over the past week and we actually found that it was uh, a lot more popular than you know more kind of traditional games where you're running around or you know um, shooting or something like that it was just a basic music making experience and they had uh, all the students had a ton of fun just kind of finding all the nooks and crannies yeah. and all the instruments to play um, so let's check it out Oh. And so you told me for this one, I mean, Hackford and Treeford is huge, right? You have a whole bunch of people mm -hmm. and you had multiple people in this experience at the same time, right? Exactly. Yeah. And that you can actually see the way that that was done uh, just in this very first scene right here. Um, so this is a uh, multiplayer object. Okay. okay. Um, I'm actually, to, to show you kind of how to do that, because you asked, um, so the question hmm. that came up was, what would it look like to do the piano in multiplayer? So we'll switch back uh, to the piano. Yeah. yeah. Right, that's true. I was looking for the autosave. So here's the piano. All right. So yeah, exactly. To do that uh, multiplayer um, kind of setup, Mm -hmm. It uh, just takes one object, that multiplayer lobby like I was talking to you about, and I can just drag it in. When I do that, you actually see some settings appeared on the right side here, and those govern kind of my, my uh, choice of my multiplayer game. So if I wanted, I could have it be versus. This one's more of a co-op game because they're you know, playing the, the piano together. And I can also choose what types of players I want. So, uh, you know, how many, what types. So I could have, you know, just people on their phones, just AR players, um, what have you. So I'm going to actually add a few players in here. And I'll allow desktop and mobile. Those VR players are kind of out of luck today. All right. So oh, I'm actually going to do that in a new scene, too. So I'm going to add a new scene in here and drag it up to the top. Mm -hmm. So the scenes, just because we have uh, touched on them just a little bit, yeah. they allow you to have basically multiple levels or multiple areas okay. in your project yeah. um, that have different things in them, kind of like slides on PowerPoint. Sure. Um, so my first scene, which I just added, is totally blank because I added a blank scene. But my second scene still has that keyboard that I made yeah. earlier. Okay. And in that first scene, I'm going to add in that multiplayer object. All right. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Adding that in and adjusting those settings now. And why did you create that first scene? Right. So uh, I forgot that our multiplayer lobby lobby actually needs a scene all to itself because it affects all the uh, next scenes. So this will actually impact scene two. You'll actually be able to see that right now. So here we go. Just click on scene two, and I actually have two players in here for my two different teams. Mm -hmm. So they'll be working together to play this game, and. All I need to do to set this up to be an actual multiplayer game is just give it a title. Let's call it keyboarding friends. And mm -hmm. 
Okay, um, there we go. I think that's almost set up. Just need one event. Uh, talking to my multiplayer object. There we go. All right, now I can just update that experience with just one button press. We'll just upload very quickly. And there we go. Okay. And now I could actually play this with whoever I want, with multiple players. Yes. So I can start to play this game. And you can actually see on mobile that they'll be able to join as well. So you could have up to I mean, as many people as you want. You could have everyone in a whole room. Exactly, a whole classroom full of um, people all playing the same game. Uh, yeah, that's really up to the game. Oh, all right. So I'm going to play here. And I'll be a desktop player, because I think we might have a mobile person joining us. All right. Looks like we have a game going. And so I'm going to join in. And there's my keyboard. And let's see. And so they can actually run around with me and jump on those keys as well. So getting to that yeah, multiplayer um, side of things as well. And you can actually just, uh, um, you know, as you were saying, invite as many friends as you want. And the thing with multiplayer is that in most cases, uh, it's very actually difficult to set up. Multiplayer games can be a little tricky um, mm -hmm. just you know, doing that and doing it on your own um, with you know traditional game development engines. However, with Blocksmith, you try to make things as you know as simple as possible. And so all you really need to have a multiplayer game going on between students, between the teachers and the students, you know everybody playing together uh, cooperatively uh, is just that one object. Nice. Uh, and you just need to um, set it up, you know, with just the, those few settings that I did, and you got a multiplayer game going. Yeah, so. no, that makes it so much more fun. So you can't just give over your phone to someone else to play your game. You can invite everyone. Exactly. Yeah. Getting, awesome. once again, that collaborative aspect of uh, Blocksmith. All right. So the last thing I wanted to show you was our uh, experience that the high school student made that really just brought everything together. Um, and while this may seem a little in intimidating at first, because um, there's a lot going on here, yeah. uh, it's actually just basically what I was doing with the keyboard, just simple um, selection events. You know, when this is clicked, mm -hmm. then this happens, uh, and uh, you know, a little bit of trigger zones to detect when something enters. Sure. Um, and that's that's one of our special objects. But yeah, there's it's very actually just simple interactions and animations, the two things that we've sure. talked about today. So let me uh, play this and see if I can get some music going. All right, here we go. What was the most number of people you had playing this at one time? Right, so we actually had probably, I'd say up to at least 10 people in this experience, and they were flying all over the records. They were uh, kind of jumping down, going underneath, exploring all the various areas, and really just making music uh, with this, this great experience that, once again, a, a high schooler, um, so someone with a, a bit more uh, knowledge, you know, with uh, some, you know, fundamentals of coding, mm -hmm. um, some exp basic experience in, in game design, they were still able to, you know, make something very yeah. quickly in a week that uh, really knocked a lot of students um, kind of off, you know, yeah. off their feet because it was it's a lot of fun. The art style was really cool, and uh, yeah, we got a lot of great attention um, at that. that time. Music festival. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, sorry if this is a dumb question, but when you say they're all interacting, they all put on a headset. And so, you have a bunch of people standing around interacting in that same virtual space. Right. So, uh, it actually depends on whoever is doing it. So, they could actually, and we did have um, VR users there using the HTC Vive. So, mm -hmm. um, there were some, some people on that. And we also had um, people on their mobile phones all nice. playing the same game together. So, that's what we call a multi platform. Uh, when you have those various um, pieces coming together. Okay, so let's see if I can actually join this game with someone else. So we have someone else here in the room who's also joining on their phone. Right, exactly. Okay. Uh, and we may have joined uh, separate games, but I can actually move around and uh, jump on these pads. Now in our new version, 
uh, coming out just in a couple of weeks, uh, or actually maybe even sooner than that, uh, all of these areas will be uh, will have launch pads on them. So you'll actually there'll be like giant trampolines and they'll launch you in the air, uh, even in virtual reality, which is kind of an interesting experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, just flying through the air. Um, our piano over here, which I didn't show you earlier, just a much larger version. Oh, and I fell. <laughs> there we go. Uh, our piano, you know, was fully playable and you can jump up and down on those. There we go. And yeah, so you'd be able to interact with this entire thing fully. Um, but once again, that would be using our new version of the software, which uh, comes out very soon. So that will be a lot of fun when that, that comes out. So if you're kind of wondering uh, when's a good time to jump on with Blocksmith, uh, now is definitely a good time because we do have that, that new version coming out here. And uh, yeah, um, the, we have the you know, new packages up for sale as well. Yeah, so mm -hmm. if you're interested in getting Blocksmith, Blocksmith is, first of all, a free software that anyone can download. And so if you want to create the experiences like we saw, test it out. It's mm -hmm. available from BlocksmithXR.com. For educators in particular, there is an education version of the software. And so what you get with that version is a little different than the free. The biggest is you get a perpetual software license. So the software is yours forever. There's no annual fees. And I think the second biggest thing is a domain. So you were saying for your you know, multiplayer experience, mm -hmm. and everyone had to be in that same domain exactly. to participate together. And so what we've seen schools doing is each school will create a domain for their school. So anyone within that school could share in that multiplayer game together. That's precisely it. Uh, and that actually is a huge advantage, especially with multiplayer, because sometimes you can get people who join who may not be uh, you know, the nicest people in the world, sure. and that, in that case, you can, uh, with the domain, you can keep that insulated and make sure your students are just playing with each other, and you, once again, as the educator, would uh, retain that oversight of the entire thing. Totally, because if you have the free version, you're still in public domain, right? Right, exactly, where, yeah, anybody can join your games, where the, the games that you publish can be fully remixed, um, yeah, if you want them to. So, it's definitely, uh, much safer and more secure place to have that domain in your classroom. Well, and the other thing I've heard from people is it's secure, it's also distraction free. So if you think maybe the Scratch website, it's awesome. There's so much content on there, but if you're trying to focus on one specific project, mm -hmm. it's really hard to compete with all the different games and things on there. Exactly. And so I love that you guys built in that as the account administrator, you can pull in experiences that you want to share, but sure. you can also control how you want to focus that specific domain. I think that's really powerful. Exactly. So, and we you can even tailor that to whatever class you're teaching. So, if you're teaching a more game development oriented class, you can perhaps bring in some of those games that the students can then take apart, see how they work. Uh, if you wanted to do take a more educational route, you could download or take in some of more, our more educational experiences. Yeah. So, you can really have a choice in uh, what you want and pick and choose there. Totally. Mm -hmm. The one other thing I really want to highlight, because I think you guys did an awesome job with this, is learning how to use the software is often kind of the beginning learning curve. And so within this domain, you get access to a digital curriculum that walks students through how to use the basic features of the software so that you can really quickly start building the kind of experiences that you showcased. Exactly. And, you know, as a, a former educator myself, I knew that, you know, whenever I would uh, want or uh, need to show a new uh, piece of software in my classroom, it was always a little intimidating. Yeah. I needed to be, you know, an expert at this. I needed to be able to answer those questions. Uh, however, you know, the approach that we've taken with this curriculum is that uh, a lot of those uh, questions that they'll, you know, come to you with are answered already, yes. either in the teacher uh, curriculum that comes with the handout that comes with the um, whole Blocksmith edu uh, Education Edition or the uh, uh, just kind of general uh, addition. Yeah. Totally. Well, and I know you said a lot of sites are just taking it, giving it to their students. Their students are figuring it out really fast. So you don't have to be an expert yourself. And I think that's a really, really beautiful thing. Exactly. Yeah. I want to share too, if you are interested, those licenses are in different tiers based on how many devices you want to link to that secure domain. So if you're in a smaller makerspace, you could get something for just 10. If you want to run a full camp, 30, or if you're at maybe a Chromebook one-to-one -one school or just want to have access to an unlimited number of devices, there's a license for that as well. Mm -hmm. 
So I know we are just about out of time. Thank you all for joining us here. We'll be following up with questions if you submitted those in the question panel. Um, any final questions that came up we want to address with the whole group? Okay, thank you all again. Feel free to follow up with us and we'll be back in touch soon. There will be a survey going out at the end of the webinar. We would really appreciate if any of you could fill it out. It'll help us know what content to include in future webinars. So look for that as soon as you sign out. It's a quick five or six question survey. Shouldn't take you more than maybe a minute or two. So, all right, guys, thank you all. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.